Have you ever wondered how to depower your powered steering rack? I'm gonna show you. We pulled a couple things, Cam and I. Yes, he wears the same shirt in every episode. Uh, we pulled a bunch of stuff out at the junkyard the other day from an NB. So we got front everything, subframe, control arms, and a steering rack. So if you do an NB front subframe, you need to do an NB steering rack. Uh, it raises the steering rack up. Everything's better uh, for lowering your car. The Ackerman angles are all better. But I don't want power steering. It clutters up the bay, and for a track car running 205s, who needs it? I'm gonna use a welder. When we get there, I'll show you how to not use a welder and do it. Let's get to it. First thing we're gonna do is take the whole thing apart. So once you've gotten it almost all the way apart, the last thing is this, which it might look like you just wanna put a 17 on there and blast it off, but this actual outside housing is what you wanna remove. I don't have a socket that big. It's gotta be like a 40 millimeter or something. So I'm gonna put this in a vise and twist. So the next part, you can either do it in a vise or you can have somebody like Cam hold it for you. We're gonna take these inner tie rods off and all that takes is we're gonna stick a flathead underneath this lip here, hammer it out so it's vertical and do that on all four. And then you can start to unscrew this. So you wanna just separate these two. This port that you just undid will shoot steering fluid at you. So I was standing right here and I got covered in steering fluid. So just put like a paper towel over it or something. So once you get the tabs bent back, we put the whole thing in a vise clamped in on the flats, which is gonna be a little tricky when we do this, try to undo that side, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, I'm learning along at the same rate as you are. Mm, there we go. So the next step is we gotta take this nut off. We're not actually taking the passenger side tie rod off at this point. I have clamped the other bushing point into the vise. And I have this uh, Craftsman, like adjustable, but also locking wrench that I thought I'd never use and I use all the time. I don't know what size this is. I think it's the same size as this end bushing over here, but you need an open end wrench for it. And then I just took a hammer, dead blow, whatever, and just held this while I hammered away from, you know, to loosen it. And sure enough, it came loose. And this on the NBs is what holds the rack in place as opposed to the NAs. It's like a snap ring, I believe. It is significantly easier easier on the NAs than it is on the NBs that I've found so far. I've done like three NA racks, I think. This is the first NB rack I've done and it is way more complicated. Oh, fuck. So messy. That's your steering rack, and that's what we want to delete right there. This seal, when it's in the steering rack, is what gets pushed uh, back and forth depending on if pressure is coming from this side or this side. So since we have no pressure, we don't want the resistance of the seal. We just want this to guide the one end, and then the uh, gears to guide the other end. So we'll cut this off, and uh, that'll be the the full depower of this setup. So the next thing, this seal here, it's just press fit on here. I'm assuming they uh, heat this up in the factory and cool this down and they slide it on or whatever. All you have to do is cut through just until you get to the rack. Try not to cut the rack. It doesn't really matter, but uh, you know, just take the extra second to slow down and do it. I'm gonna use my favorite tool, second favorite tool, uh, cut off wheel. And I'm just gonna slit through. And when I get far enough, you can hammer it with a chisel to break it. Uh, I'm holding it in a vise with soft jaws uh, for AN fittings. It works perfectly. I'll have a link to these down below if you want to set for yourself. But uh, yeah, let's get cutting. Pop that guy off. So I ended up making a relief cut in the back just so that it had somewhere to wedge. And now I just stick a screwdriver in it, pry it until it pops. There you go. The other side should pop off. Then all you're left with is this metal ring here. If you didn't cut through it already, I'm just gonna cut a little deeper on the inside of this thing and do the same, just pop it off. 
So I'm an idiot. This is a two, not two piece, but it's already a split ring. So you just gotta find the split, separate it, and it comes off. I cut through it, doesn't really matter. But there you go, that's the real power steering delete. This step is extra because we are gonna be putting polyurethane bushings into these pockets. But if you have a press, pressing out bushings is super simple. The press is actually the same size as the sleeve in here. This is a 32 mil socket. It's a little small for the rubber bushing, but it'll be perfect to eject the uh, sleeve in. So I'm gonna take the sleeve out first. There you have it. That was actually unbelievably easy. There's two options here, there's two roads you can take. You can cut these off and weld this shut and grind it flat so it looks all nice, these three pieces. Or you can take the bolts you took out if you don't have a welder, uh, take the bolts you took out, cut off a little bit extra of the line and just hammer it over and thread it back in. That way no dirt can get in here. No fluid's gonna come out anymore because there's gonna be no fluid in it. But you don't want dirt getting in there and getting all inside the gears and whatnot. So make sure you cap these two off. This is just a useless uh, gasket holder. So uh, I'm gonna cut them off, I'm gonna weld them shut and then we will end up throwing a coat of paint on this guy just to clean it all up. Once you get those all cut off, you're left with two holes. I'm going to now fill those in with a welder. This is just mild steel. So just a couple quick patch jobs. I've done this previously with JB Weld uh, on both my rack and Dylan's rack. And it works really well. You can grind it down and paint it. And by the time you're done, uh, there's nothing left. So for you case swap guys that want this to fit under the oil pan, this is the best way to do it. Uh, and what I would highly recommend. So this next piece is a controversial topic. This is the uh, pinion shaft that goes from the, this is the steering column to the car. And this is the part that goes into the rack that we took out earlier. The internet will tell you both ways. Take this out, weld it, put it back together. Because in order to make the hydraulic system work, there is a little bit of flex in here. Nothing that like, if I twisted it right now, I'd feel. But you can stiffen up the input from A to B by welding that up. But there's also a higher risk that when you weld it, you warp the shaft and it doesn't fit and it all binds up and then you just essentially toasted this whole part. So I don't trust my welding skills enough to do that. Uh, I'm still fairly new, so I'm gonna leave it together. The two that I've built so far are not welded and I've had zero issues with it. My steering feels great. Uh, I have no like free play or anything like that. So we're gonna do this. Worst case, I can take this out when it's in the car and rebuild it again. Also worth noting, to fill these, you can buy a cap kit from a couple websites. I didn't. I'm just gonna fill them with RTV and run them smooth over. And then that way, just again, dirt can't get in here because we don't wanna get this stuff greasy or dirty. We wanna keep it greasy and clean. So while the RTV cures, the next thing we're gonna do is press in these uh, polyurethane bushings. I really think they're honestly Dalrin, but they are two halves. So I'm gonna push the top half in first and Cam's gonna hold the other side, but so that I don't screw up the top face, I'm just gonna slip this piece of aluminum underneath. There you go. We'll repeat that four times. If you don't have a vise or a, a press, you can probably do this very easily in a vise. Honestly, this might be easier in a vise. So that's the outside bushing pushed in, and then there's a problem with the sleeves that they sent. So the sleeves are always supposed to be the same length, maybe a little longer than the bushing. And for some reason or another, these are significantly longer. So all I'm gonna do to modify this is set it up next to it, mark the excess and just run it through the bandsaw and clean it up. And then we'll end up pressing them into these sleeves here. Got the bushings pressed in, put the sleeves in. I definitely cut them a little too short, but they'll still do, still do exactly what they have to do. So the next thing is gonna be to reinstall this guy into here which goes that way. Uh, I am going to copiously grease this and this. Uh, I've covered, I've wiped out most of the old grease. I'm just gonna put assembly lube all over it. Any grease is fine. Uh, lithium grease works great. Assembly grease works great. Wheel bearing, lube, whatever. Uh, just needs to have some sort of anti-friction material on it. Since we didn't remove this, the detent spring is gonna be in the way. So I just suck a flathead in and Pulled it back while Cam pushed the rack in, and now, oh, you can make a mess. Uh, you get the rack through the other side. When you're putting the, the steering column in, the gears are gonna slot 
into the gears on this rack, so make sure you have that all lined up nice. And then anywhere on the rack is fine. You can turn it once it's installed. So I put the steering shaft back in and it tightened this whole thing up so it can't rotate, which was enough for me to be able to loosen this side of the uh, inner tie rod. So we're gonna blast this guy out, swap it out with the new one, and get back to putting it back together. This is pretty much ready to go in. The only piece I haven't even ordered yet is the uh, collar for this. You need the NB spline adapter. If I had thought about it and I thought, I think we were trying to take it off, but we couldn't get it off the junkyard, we would have grabbed that adapter piece. It's just an OEM part. So we'll probably grab that from Alex Todd. Assembly goes together and at this point I can twist it with my hands, which is a big plus from where it was like 20 minutes ago. I ended up having to loosen this. So I stuck it in the vise the other way, grabbed onto these sides with a uh, pair of channel locks loosen this a little bit, put a 17 on here, backed it off like two turns and tightened it all back up. There's no slop in here, but it's turnable by hand. Originally I had to grab it with vice grips and spin it, which isn't the goal. Welcome to my lovely basement. Uh, so we're gonna finish this up here. As you can see, I painted it. This is just some Rust-Oleum black and some like Rust-Oleum, I believe it's like titanium something. Uh, Came out okay, it's just for the track car. If this was like my personal car, uh, I would definitely have taken the time to make it perfect, but whatever, so it's good enough. Uh, I already installed this boot just to make sure the parts did not look right, but they are right, so uh, I'll put a link to these in the description below. It comes with everything you need to slam the boot on it. But we're gonna do this side next. Take the boot, slide it over, and then you can see here, there's a small recessed lip. You want this piece of the boot to sit over that. Uh, so again, I'm gonna need two hands, but just press this on and it, you probably have to work around it a little bit for it to seat. So there you have it. They are very, very oversized for what they are. So I just pull them tight. You don't have to like tool them tight. These are just pulled by hand. Hit them with the dikes, pick that up later. And then there you have it, we're gonna Thread the nuts back on. Uh, obviously we don't know how far in these are gonna go just because we'll have to align the car. And then that'll be a wrap and you'll have a finished power steering rack. That is a rebuilt, depowered NB steering rack. We'll call it race car spec. It's definitely not perfect by any means. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments if you thought this was helpful, uh, if you've depowered your rack, if you did anything different. Uh, if you know the difference or if you felt the difference between the welded and the not welded, uh, Opinion, I guess we'll call it. Um, I'm curious, I can always take it out and do it if I have to, but uh, we'll see if it's good enough. So, you know the deal, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more. Uh, we're gonna be ramping up the track car build pretty intensely here in the next coming uh, weeks and months. My trunk right now is so full of car parts for that thing that I cannot actually even go grocery shopping. So, uh, stay tuned for that, should be pretty sweet. See you around. Do you ever wonder how to do you ever want to do it? I do power three. I do I don't do power three. <laughs>